if we could uh, go ahead and get started at six o'clock. Uh, if we can go ahead and take a roll. Sure. This is the November twelfth. Excuse me, November seventeenth. Uh, Stork Review Board meeting. Special meeting for the November meeting. Uh, Jonathan Stone. Here. Cindy Toll. Here. Derek Munson. Here. Chair McLaughlin. Here. Um, looks like the next item on the agenda is comments from Mayor Neely. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, Mayor Neely asked to be put on the agenda for tonight. He had some comments to provide to the board, and I graciously added him to the agenda. Welcome. Basically, it's a big thank you for your service. Um, uh, you you have challenges that not that many not that many cities have uh, historic review boards, and not that many cities have selected uh, uh, buildings and houses to be on uh, on their local inventory. Um, most of this was done back by the 1970s, 80s, 80s 1980s, and uh, that's when the city had some power to do things like that. Now, of course, it's owner consented. We haven't had very many of those come on, but I don't know if you all know it, but uh, Cindy and her husband actually had their own house put onto the uh, register when, when uh, they did all their work on it and so forth. So she's one of the few after, after the laws had changed that had done so. But um, from my standpoint, you, you provide an important service to the city. Uh, we, we do have historic buildings that are protected because of the e efforts that you have. And of course, uh, we take great, great pride in that. So I just simply wanted to thank you. Uh, I know that you still have some applications. I believe you, you don't have a, as many applicants as you have positions open. Is that correct? I, I don't know. I have to check up with Nancy at where we are. Yeah, well, I, I did. <laughs> uh, I, I just wanted to let you know ahead of time, you will have one applicant. Uh, I'm planning to actually apply to be on this board. You're bored. I have to do something with my time, so <laughs> <laughs> this is something that's going to be fun. I'm not trying to bias you or anything on the interviews, <laughs> but it is a, it is a uh, it's one of the boards I'm 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 really excited about, and I just wanted to thank you all. Uh, I think one of our greatest challenges is keeping an architect on <laughs> this, this board, but we've been successful the whole time. I mm -hmm. know there's one person behind me who served <laughs> for many years in that position, and I'm glad other people have stepped up over time. So thank you all very much. I appreciate thank you. it. Well, thank you very much, and if you do apply, we will vet you. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. Thanks for uh, having an open mind to us and kind of a hands-off policy which was great so well, actually I don't <laughs> we actually you you are a governing board I mean the only time we would be involved in any decisions that you made is if one of your decisions was appealed to us we uh, we, we probably could well we can direct some of our advisory committees but you stand as a governing board like the Planning Commission does so uh, if we ever got involved in decisions that you were making, I think we'd be in serious legal trouble. <laughs> yeah. No, so. but, but you've, you've let us interview people and, and, and screen people, and you've been supportive that way, and, yeah. you know, I, it's, it's been nice. Well, I, I figure the reason I went that direction is I figured you knew more about what you do than I would, so yeah. it made sense that you would do the, do the interviews. Yeah, let the Westland Mayor know that. <laughs> mostly, mostly appreciate it. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Um, Looks like our next thing is uh, design advice, 14-135, the Carnegie Library design sure, advice. Sure, I'm going to bring uh, Library Director Marine Cole up. Um, in continuation of keeping the board closely updated of the process of the Carnegie Library expansion, um, Marine wanted to bring her team back and let you know where they are and especially update you on the decision the City Commission made in October about kind of the next steps and the chosen um, scheme. If you remember, you looked at kind of five schemes previously, and the City Commission did give direction on the scheme, and they have had some additional updates, and they're requesting, of course, as design advice, any non-binding direction. If You know, you don't have to say yes or no, but if there's something strong you feel that they sh the design team should know at this part in the process, this is a great opportunity to do that. So I'm going to hold. Thanks. Well, thanks for um, allowing us to be on your agenda again. We really appreciate the opportunity to keep you updated so that when the review process starts, which hopefully will be okay. at the end of January, yes. then it will go really smoothly. At least we'll have an ongoing relationship, that's for sure. 
So as Christina said, on um, October 15th, the City Commission selected the two-story addition to go for. You'll remember that we looked at a number of them, and this was one of them. And the Library Board and the Building um, Committee favored one story for the functionality of the layout of the interior of the library, but um, for many reasons, the City Commission went with the two-story addition. So that's what we are working on. We're moving forward with that. And um, our architects are going back, and now we're looking at program inside the building and the layout, which is critical and very interesting when you think about a two-story addition connecting to a one-story, you know, with the daylight basement and how it all connects and the flow of traffic and everything else. So um, what we'd really like to get your feedback on, if you have any and want to give us some, is the idea of entry. Since we're dealing with a two-story addition, um, the, well, the you way you framed it earlier was really well. Can you say that yeah. again? Because well, I really like that. Um, why don't you come around here? Because you, c I don't know where a pointer is. Oh, that's okay then. That's okay, fine. but I can. Sh that's can fine. The pointer works on here, so if you tell me where to go, I can. Okay. Well, when we were presenting kind of the pros and cons of all the different options, um, you know, the two-story, you know, had the, the 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 benefit of taking up the least amount of park but it was probably the most detrimental in terms of a library layout because you have two stories if we don't count the basement level of the Carnegie so and and staffing being limited so what we are looking at with the two-story library both in site development and kind of the functional layout of the library is kind of a central service point and Christine that's right so we're really looking at the link between the Carnegie and the addition as the entry point, which would be the main service point, both for information, um, even back of house for book drop, um, getting, you know, going back into reference, RFID, all that kind of good stuff, while maintaining a very, very viable Carnegie library. You know, so, and um, so we are really looking at putting that entry in, I guess, if we're looking at a historical building, kind of the gap or the hyphen, you know, between the new and the old, and, and creating a two-story space in that area that will both celebrate kind of the old building from the east side, as well as open up both floors to that service point so things can be monitored and be seen. And, and what this does is it really allows us to have the primary entry um, as the, with the ADA access as well and not disrupting kind of the historical front of the Carnegie. Um, you know, we've looked at, you know, some of the schemes and uh, perspectives we showed. We had ramps out front, and I think, you know, you've heard us talk about how important, you know, the base is like one-third the height, you know, of the overall building, and then if you start berming up to that. So we feel like we get the benefit of, of you know, both worlds. You know, we, we don't, you know, kind of disrupt the, the Carnegie entry aesthetically even though it will always have a secondary you know if you chose if you choose to to go through the Carnegie the old Carnegie is the main entrance you can do that but we wouldn't close it off it would still be available it just wouldn't be the primary or ADA accessible entry that would be the new entry it solves and a lot of issues like we talked about that what do you do in that space to separate and it's a functional thing Mm -hmm. I mean, it makes sense. It's not drawing attention to it. I don't know. Uh, is, the only thing I'm thinking about is security. Do you, ha do you feel like it's going to be a security issue to have all those doors and all those entries? No. I mean, you know, we have all those doors and entries now. Oh, you do? We have one. Well, I didn't know they were locked. I thought they were locked. Oh, no. <laughs> there are, the one that's in the ramp down to the children's area, mm -hmm. and the, that's open all the time. And then the other main entry is open all the time. So we're used to that, and in the future, if we implement RFID, we'll, it probably will even be better because we'll probably get 
those kind of gates that are mm. like clear glass that you put at the entries that won't be barriers, but they'll take care of a lot of book theft. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> so. what I was thinking about. <laughs> what a, yeah. um, so, so this is this option. There's the other option that you're looking at as well, right? That was option one, wasn't it? I mean, it? there's option two options here. Well, this, with the it, other entrance on the right, kind of right. There. I think it's relating to what I, I submitted. Yes, yeah. it is. It is, and I think what we're doing is we, when when we did the recap, you know, we were asked to look at the Carnegie as the primary entrance. We were asked to look at Sixth Street as a primary entrance. Yeah. Um, one of the things we've been debating um, a little bit back and forth. You can see that the existing slide in Swing and Spray Park are right where that. Sixth Street sure entry would want to be. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we do have schemes where we move them a little further east, mm -hmm. so they're not blocking mm -hmm. kind of the six. But the, still, the idea is, and and again, we're just in the process of developing both the site and library. Um, we want to keep that entry towards that that. You gap. want it right here instead of on the side, but we'll. Yeah, because, because if we is, put it if we put it say in the middle of right. the south side there, right. then it no longer becomes a central right. entry, mm -hmm. and you have people coming in almost at extreme corners. Mm -hmm. I'm curious though uh -huh. where where it's at, which works really well, but it's mm -hmm. subjugated to the Carnegie. Will people not notice this entry and go to the Carnegie all the time, not seeing because these are mm -hmm. these are my. It's almost like an afterthought, like oh, there's another entrance. It's well, it'll be in signs, I'm sure. Right. Well, one of the things that I really want to emphasize that I've been talking to these guys about is when you're at the front of the Carnegie looking straight on at the entrance, yeah. I really want the new entry off on the in the addition to be viewable and noticeable in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. So that when you're looking straight on, there it. is, like you see two entries. Mm -hmm. You at least know back there that that is a main entry. Right, especially for uh, handicap access. Exactly. You can always and yeah, we can, there we can always, yeah, absolutely help that with signage. And we have, actually, this is way better than a lot of other at Carnegie and things that I've seen where people go a really long ways and then yeah. find out that that door is even locked. Ours will be open, <laughs> it just won't be ADA accessible. I see. So nobody will ever be like unable mm -hmm. to come through that. I really want to keep the existing front door an and open existing science. front door right would you mind describing again how you're planning on controlling books leaving through the main not the main entrance but the original Carnegie entrance well we're gonna have um, gates security gates there okay and so those detect RFID tags that are in each item okay and they they're kind of like um, they stand on either side that makes sense yeah, yeah. and they're, but they're like glass they're pretty unobtrusive the new yeah. ones are they're yeah. they're not bad at all so um, yeah. yeah nothing and we will probably have staff roaming through the area as well because what we plan on putting in there will need some staff um, help um, I really appreciate the idea of the central service points I think mm -hmm. you're really onto something there mm -hmm. and it would end up being a really nice space overall I think it would feel um, very appropriate both in height and volume um, the entry way is pretty pinched and mm -hmm. you may not want to answer this question. I can totally respect that. Mm -hmm. um, it almost seems to me like we're calling these side entries the main entries mm -hmm. for the purposes of meeting code, mm -hmm. but the primary Carnegie entrance would almost serve as the primary entrance still. I don't. I don't see those side entrances really being. Uh, and what you're and you know and 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 we're looking yeah, right now area. and they could they could move further north south we're debating yes. whether we have the we'll one towards seventh mm -hmm. um, but those are really just vestibules that you're seeing there which you would have in any scheme you know those are just 10 by 10 you know weather vestibules and the, the real entry is really the whole atrium area yeah you but know right I'm, there if I'm Standing on uh, John Adams, Adams Street, you're gonna go straight. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm not gonna see those entries. And when I look at where the entry ramp is, it is really pinched down. Um, and I totally understand what you're saying about you know respecting mm -hmm. the slide and and not wanting to move those swings. Um, 
because other people have something to say about reducing the size of that playground. My comment remains, it doesn't feel like a prominent entry. Okay. And the, the, the entry on the 6th is a prominent entry, is what you're saying. They're, they're portraying it as the primary entrance into the facility. And the circulation doesn't work, and I don't think you're really going to see it. So I think it would be really interesting to see an elevation, kind of how they're planning on doing that. Do the next the only, slide? Sure. The yeah, it's, see this it's, we have right. not, the yes, you can do the next slide. Um, that showing on. kind of the 6th Street. That was before. But, but that's, that's what before. the 6th Street entry. Yeah. Yes, right. which right. unless we move the slide right. and swing further east, we can't do. Can that side entry be reduced if you were to take it on 6th Street instead of, it looks like it's almost the width of the building. That one's smack dab on the south side of the of the wing right. and that doesn't that doesn't um, facilitate the central service point yeah. but yeah. without pen and paper here mm -hmm. I think I can mm -hmm. make that I think we can still let's go back well, to the plan I, I think if that um, the swings in the slide moved east is towards Jefferson Street mm -hmm. um, then you could still have a nice size play area and you could provide a decent entry that looks like an entry from I agree. from Sex Street. I agree. So well, can, can I ask what the, what the that, service? You know what I mean. No. You've got service notated up into the right corner. What is um, that for? We we that is for um, mostly trash and recycling. Oh, okay. So it's not okay. an alternate entry for um, large no, no furniture or whatever. That's no. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Um, so, so you'll have entry on the, as we're looking at this, uh -huh. on the left side, uh -huh. off of 7th. But off of 6th, where you have your main entry here, I think I see what Derek's saying. Could could that entry, instead of, uh, I, I'm just talking, uh -huh. could, could that entry have some sort of an angle to it so something's a little bit more, hey, here's kind of our cool entry, and this is very utilitarian. And I think anybody coming to this is going to be, ooh, do I go to left? Do I go right? I'll go straight. Something's got to say, hey, man, this is the cool way to get into this thing. But, I, but you know, cool means money, so. But, no, 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 no. I mean, <laughs> now it's like if you, so if you're looking that, it's to my right, to your left, where it says entry. Yeah. Right? Could, could that be more of an angled well, sort of come in instead of pow in? And I don't know if people are going to notice that's how you get into the Well, place. I think with signage, they can walk that path there, and that path could have the signage on it. And, well, it and there may also be something with the way you look at the, the central, central service point there. And what I'm curious about is the rendering doesn't show the double eight height atrium. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's not really clear as to how it would engage the library because it, that the, the drawing the floor plan implies a, a two story height space, mm -hmm. right? Uh, which it, and the only renderings we've seen have shown uh, a single story uh, hyphen. Yeah, and I think this is a very recent rendition, so they haven't brought the other. Right, the other. but but that's one of the things I'm really curious about is is that if you're essentially introducing a new volume, um, oh. mm -hmm. and that maybe that volume could become engage yeah. engage the back of the uh, library differently to provide that sort of two story visual anchor to say that this is the entrance back here mm -hmm. so what i'm hearing from the board i think there was some concern about having this very large new entrance overshadowing the carnegie entrance and what i'm hearing mm. kind of collectively from the board that that's not a worry you see right now and you're actually pushing back the other direction of making sure that well, I the, think the old design made it look like that the one with mm -hmm. the big plaza type mm -hmm. entrance mm -hmm. didn't I think detract from the original and okay this is much more subtle but I still think it it could be direct it could direct foot traffic that direction with the proper signage and That's it could even be as simple as bring those vestibules out so they're more prominent mm -hmm. so you could see them from the street frontage we've talked right. about doing and, that and, and you know right now we're, you know, we're, we're, you know, we're you know kind of the architectural style you know, of, you know, how we address the Carnegie, you know, being subordinate, you know, do we, are we symmetrical, are we not, mm -hmm. where's the entry, that kind of thing. So we're, we're working, and I'd say this is not the perfect, I mean, 
my feelings aren't hurt that <coughs> you guys are talking about the, I mean about this but I was wondering like right in here you know if this almost became covered you took this wall out you know or it becomes transparent so you really move the entry right there mm -hmm. yeah you, you know so that's Something so people see, totally oh, that's going to pull yeah. me in instead of, is that a service entrance on the left or right, or is it the main entrance? Because oh, okay. even if you put all that effort into trying to keep that subjugate, which is a great idea, I think everybody's going to go to the front. But if you make something so they see, oh, this is what's going to pull me into the new space, mm -hmm. you're trying to pull them in, right? Yes. Um, and pull them away from the front. Yes. That You've got to do something that's a little dramatic to make it feel right. like I'm, right. it's... Well, Bring also, you know, if there's like an automated book drop there, there's going to be other reasons to go there. Right. But I mean, I totally agree with you. I think it needs to be very easily seen from the front of the building. That's definitely. But I think there will be activities that draw them there as well. Something that, oh, that says, hey, I want to go that way. Yeah. I don't want to go the front. Well, exactly. What I'm concerned about is I want the front door always to be open and used, but I don't want it to be the... The fr I don't want that room to just be a complete thoroughfare for everything. Do you know what I mean? So there so needs to be good people circulation through there, through the addition, in and out, et cetera. But just if it's the only pathway in and out, mm -hmm. I see that as a big mistake. I, I don't want to pl play architect, but um, it, it's similar to what you're saying about uh, maybe covering the entry. And, and maybe this will come out with the exploration of resolving the, the, the two-story to one-story. But right now you have a two-story volume butting up against a one-story uh, mm -hmm. Carnegie um, that if you just took that volume and shifted it to the right, say, half half of the Carnegie, um, you know, it, it it's not so much about s symmetry uh, from the... Uh, the 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 um, atrium space, uh, but you're still maintaining symmetry on the the back building and the front building, but then you have you create essentially a, a double height vestibule, or something. You mean right here? Yeah, take that volume and shift it to the right 20, 30 feet. Oh, over here. Yeah. Okay. And then you have a, what looks like a pretty cool. A pretty a cool atrium entry thing that yeah. pulls you. That's a thought. And totally asymmetrical to the Carnegie, and not somewhat celebrating the back. Of the, that's what we were trying to. You know, one of the things we're really trying to do is make the Carnegie a very viable structure within the new library. You know, we were kind of opening up. You know, taking the. You know, making larger entrance. You know, so that you can get back to this beautiful room. Um, this we're actually kind of seeing, we're looking at that now that this could be kind of a, a, a one story or a two story back up against. Or one and a half, take, make, split the difference or something. Yeah, I know. Two thirds. It's, that's, we've been looking, you know, right now we're just kind of, you know, mm -hmm. picking away and sketching and drawing and throwing away half of what we draw, you know, to kind of better understand what we want to do. I think the symmetry, at least the implied symmetry, is important. You know, oh, if yeah. you mm -hmm. if you if you, especially if you read a lot of the criteria, mm. you know that will help. I think kind of honor the Carnegie, and even though we're almost twice the height, you know, if we kind of honor the proportions and how it was laid out, we've actually been. Well, what if we were doing? What if we were 1914 and we were adding to this? Mm -hmm. You know, not doing the exact details, but what rules would apply? You know, what proportions would apply? Mm -hmm. And I think that implied symmetry, and that's, that it's hard, because right where you want kind of the, the big gesture for the entry, it really needs to be more quiet to honor the building that's already there. Mm -hmm. So these are all the things that we're trying to to, to, you know, in, at 50% schematics, we want to have two schemes that you'll want to build both of them, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. kind of thing, but they're different, mm -hmm. you know, from one another, and that meet that criteria. And one nice thing about the historic review board applications, and the board can simultaneously re review and approve an option A and an option B. 
to allow you to move forward. Right. So what we're hoping though at 50, you'll still have to choose because we won't have any chance of making our our summer construction deadline. You and, know, with and, y you know, with all the approval process, we have to go and through. And you guys are looking to come before us next month. Yes. Christmas well, month. Yes. The month we typically do nothing. Yes. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a whole other topic. But that's a whole, but I mean, so we, we have a, um, a community meeting December 2nd where we want to have preliminary layouts for the library itself, yeah. you know, and how it works, how the new edition works with the Carnegie, as well as two schemes, you know, and those might each have two different floor plans mm -hmm. of the two-story addition, how it looks yeah. from the exterior and starts setting up the aesthetics for the interior. Yeah. And then from that, we're hoping to get one scheme, you know, one scheme to move forward. Okay. I so, will point out, sorry. Go ahead. Um, that the gesture that Jonathan and John are talking about mm -hmm. are a lot larger than what I was suggesting. Mm -hmm. um, has to be something. And I think it could be uh, bringing that, that vegetable over so it is noticeable. Um, but yeah, okay. just a little bit more development. Sorry, Jeff. No, I was just going to ask Christina, is our uh, meeting time next month, is that like the 23rd? Yeah, so as many, most December <laughs> meetings, I'll oh, we'll just jump right into the question. Uh, we generally don't have a December meeting unless there's a land use application, and we generally end up doing a special date because the normally scheduled meeting almost always falls during um, yeah. the holiday break. So at the end of this design advice, I know Maureen has a request for the board to meet in December to continue to review this, and if the board wishes to move forward, they can, though we will have to choose a date tonight. It would probably have to be that 15th or 16th, I'm guessing, from all of us and with the holidays and stuff. That That's a month from now, essentially, and mm -hmm. um, I guess that would be up to us what we decide. Mm -hmm. Okay. All righty. Um, does anybody else have any other comments? Okay. Thanks for coming. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. I mean, Thank you very you're, much. You're, you're almost there. Um, and I have two. Okay. We generally don't. Um, if um, I have two, and I also have a comment from the Glaucon neighborhood. Okay, uh, Doug Neely, if you want to come up and make a comment. Yes, sir. <clears throat> one of the, one of the ideas that was thrown forward was to have the the back. Um, the back wall of the Carnegie being the inner wall of the vestibule. And I don't know what the shifting might do. If you enlarged it, you could see the whole wall, I suppose, as part of that design. Uh, but that's, I don't know if that's still the intent, is to have that uh, back wall as a, 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 a wall that would be on the vestibule. Is that correct? Yes. That. So that's one thing, to, one thing to think about in terms of if you're going to shift that vestibule. OK. Thanks. Yeah. Um, is it Bob? How do, Ma, Mahoney. Mahoney, is that? Okay. Right. I understand this isn't a public hearing process, but just a few thoughts. Uh, I think that the architects have done a, a, a great job in, in preserving the integrity of the Carnegie, but. I don't want us to see us overthink that and uh, leave the new expansion as a uh, stepchild of the Carnegie. I think you've got a beautifully uh, situated uh, uh, new building as proposed, but what I want to see is I, I want to see that building shout out to the public, this is where I am and I'm new, mm. and come visit me. I don't want it to be sub uh, subordinate to the Carnegie. I think the Carnegie has done its service, and it will uh, be uh, preserved for uh, for uh, uh, the future. And it's uh, and, and just leave it that way. We, we've we've it served its purpose, and it will continue to serve its purpose, but not not function as as the library has proposed. So what I would suggest on that right side. <coughs> uh, that uh, the entryway that it just really shouts out to the public this is the entryway right here this is the entry to this magnificent structure 
And that, that thing is going to uh, have evolve because data processing in our 21st century is evolving. I mean, if you don't like the way the message is delivered to you, just wait five minutes. You know, somebody else will figure out a new app. And libraries are going to evolve because of the way that we handle information. And <clears throat> what I want to see is a lot of people going into that library and inviting other people behind them. This is, this is where we are. And uh, so th that's my thoughts. And the other thing, too, keep in mind, this is a two-story building. <clears throat> As I get older, I don't want to climb stairs, and neither do the patrons of the library, and they're getting older. Generations are getting older, and they patronize these libraries, and they don't want to be climbing stairs all day just to get to a book up on the second story. So whatever you can do to, uh, to uh, uh, make that a little more gentle experience for the older generation uh, in, uh, in Oregon City population, by all means do it because uh, you know kids can run up and down stairs all day but senior citizens can't so keep that in mind too thank you well thank you very much thank you. if possible i also have an email that i'd like to read from the mclaughlin neighbor association oh, yeah okay. yeah uh this is general comments to hrb and staff um this is from denise who was not able to make it tonight as you're aware i cannot attend the hrb meeting tonight due to an unforeseen conflict the library project team is scheduled to attend a meeting of the mclaughlin neighborhood association on december 4th to review i suspect the same drawing that the hrb will be looking at will be the same that we will see the McLaughlin Neighborhood Association supports and ad support and advocacy for the two-story addition was predicated on the design with the entry on 6th Street. This design would allow the existing front entry to the Carnegie to retain its character defining features of the base and plinth. This architectural element is key to the design of the building. To allow for the steps to be so modified as to make the base disappear would not be in keeping with the design guidelines and certainly not within the newly minted National Register status. The MMA is looking forward to our conversation with the project team on December 4th and further conversations with staff and HRB regarding this manner. Thank you in advance. Uh, advance on behalf of the MMA. Okay, thank you. Well, I'd like to schedule a date. Okay. Uh, Just for, for me, I don't know, let's ask everybody, but the 15th, which is a Monday, would have to work so I could potentially have a, another board meeting on that Tuesday? Yeah, I think the, this version in December works because I, mean, I know this um, is free. Yeah. The, meet, the meeting if, name is if free. If that Monday, the 15th, works for everyone, same works thing. Six, six o'clock. Does it work for you, Charles? Mm hmm. How about you? Mm, yeah, we can make that work. Okay, so so we'll plan on December fifteenth at six. Appreciate Yeah. Okay. Thanks for coming. Uh, our next item is fourteen dash one thirty six design advice on Thirteenth Street. Did I, Did you lose my live manager? Just crashed. Did you? You mean like our agenda? Your agenda? Did you just lose it? No, I got it. Okay. Sorry. I've lost everything. I got mine. Thanks. Apologize. I don't know why this is not I, why I lost it. Okay. You're on the agenda twice today? Yes. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Try to be three times, but Christina wouldn't let me. I wouldn't let him. <laughs> but he may be here in December with another design advice. Uh, we not. have a property on 13th Street just off of Washington. And for board members that were here a couple years ago, you remember that the board did approve a new Something there. house. It was a Craftsman bungalow with a detached um, garage. Story and a half with a gable on the front mm -hmm. gig. Uh, if you remember this, the downward slip, this is all a hillside and um, Spicer Brothers parking lots below us. And so there's one, the Rasmussen house is right here. It's a yellow, um, kind of vernacular, Queen Anne, and then Washington Street. So this is 13th Street pretty much ends right here. 
uh, economy has turned around. A new property owner owns this and has enlisted Mr. Island to look at opportunities for the site. It is zoned R3.5 and has um, over 7,000 square feet. So potentially it could be a duplex. However, um, because of the steep slopes, there's a question if um, they have enough property and land to be a duplex because slopes over 35% potentially take away from their developable space and they may not have enough. Be duplex so there's a little question so that's why you see ADU because they're thinking of maybe instead of if they can't get the duplex they will move forward with a single-family house an accessory dwelling unit which is allowed as a permitted use for a single-family house but the um, rules change with an ADU if they're looking to make this a right. they know they know the property and will have to live in one of the two units yeah yeah, yeah compared to a duplex the but it but that um, if they lose the property that has over 35% slope to not allow them a duplex, this is their second option to incorporate an ADU as part of the, the And I, I think the ADU is going to be the way we have to go okay. because of the slope. So um, what I'd like to show you, um, I'm going to kind of lay, go through these and then I will um, <coughs> hand it over to Todd Island. Um, th in this manner, they've proposed a vernacular design, um, and that ADU, uh, uh, if you can see, is is kind of a, a over the garage. And while it shows that it's two elements, they're pr proposing the stairway up the ADU to kind of be between. So in a sense, while these are two separate buildings, it's all one building. Uh -huh. um, I mean, it, it, aesthetically, because the stairways will go up, the stairway will go up through the middle of the two to access. The ADU up here. So here's a take a look at where we are here. The main house to the left, the garage and ADU to the right. This is another option. There was a discussion with Todd before. This is not normally a vernacular element. You normally see this in bungalow. So I asked to see what it would look like in a more of a traditional vernacular style without the second kind of gable. So that's showing kind of an option B. This shows it with that broken up. Um, I looked, asked to see what it would look like, kind of the massing from down below on uh, 15th Street in Washington. This is looking up from kind of the Spicer Brothers parking lot. This is the massing looking up. You'll see here the building and then the garage and the ADU and then these are that stair landing as you move up uh, these are just some site context photos that's the site the flat part I'm gonna uh, bring it back top what I've said all along is you know this is um, always going to be a massing question I think um, having such a large element on top of the garage and you know working on all the different ways you can reduce it and how can you adequately show from looking up does it what what I mean individually those masses you know are compatible with the historic house next door but on mass when you put them all together is this going to be a large bulking new construction um, Initially, I was not supportive of this secondary element just because it brought in more of a bungalow element. Well, oh, sorry. But then I wonder if we're just creating too much mass here. So I'm going to yeah. hand it over to Todd, and he can. Uh, what we're again, again, what we're looking for is big picture comments, um, non-binding that you can give back to the applicant as they move forward when they do their land use application. So any good direction you can give tonight is helpful. Okay. Um, well, when we were first given the project, um, we were basically given the drawings for this option right here. And the client came to us and said, this is really ugly. <laughs> we want to do something different. We want to get the massing reduced a little bit. So we came up with the other option, which if you go back one, <clears throat> with the second gable up on the front there to break it up and then we also reduced um, the height of the, the ADU a foot 
um, from what was originally proposed. And then <coughs> the connecting element, we're looking at a lower pitch roof there, keeping the 812 on the front and then going to a 512 on the back side of that. So that connecting element kind of disappears and is really. And I don't think there's a roof plan on here. You, but you don't really see it in either of these drawings. I think in one of the other renderings, you kind of see the, the connecting element. It's just a cross gable in between them that covers the stairway. Kind of right here. To right cover there. the stairway yeah. is what you're saying. It covers the stairway. Will the stairway be covered going all the way up? It will. Yeah. Can you go down? To that one. so you really you're seeing the bottom tread of the stair there mm, yeah that um, little square mm -hmm. um, and so you've got a, a the, sloped little shed roof over the garage door correct it looks like a bunch of row houses when you put it all together it's pretty beefy mm. I mean the like ADU <laughs> The ADU looks big, and I know it's probably what maybe twenty feet wide. It is, like that. and it looks every bit as tall as it is wide, if not more. It's huge. But I, I don't think it looks taller than the existing home that's there. No, it's not. And I don't think it. That's looks a tiny house. Uh, you, I'll say you did a good job of illustrating what you're looking to do here. Throwing a SketchUp model in this photo is not easy and both the front and the back I, I think you really accurately portrayed kind of what's going on here well we but had to ghost out the big holly tree that would really obscure that edu completely yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, i don't know it's an I, old holly tree you can't tell i think it matters just some photoshop thing here to to advocate for what you're proposing here is that this edu will be um, more more in line with the existing house than kind of what's shown here um, uh, just looking at the proportions of where the top of that garage door is compared to the adjacent house, you know, you, it's it's a conceptual rendering. You can't get that exact, but I think it's going to be taller than what kind of maybe so. Yeah, here. yeah. You don't have. I mean, you got it like a perspective from the street, but you don't have a head on. No, the a straight shot on it to see how they look. The only um, thing I really uh, that roof would thing question here is the. Um, the shed roof at the ADU right, coming into right the there. main house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks awkward. Right in here? Right. If this roof came up just a little bit, so perhaps the gutter lines matched, and, and perhaps it was different up here. Mm -hmm. that might Is it, no, I think it would. Yeah. What's the rule for, with an ADU, it can be attached to the house or it can be it's somehow. Attached or detached whatever it is there's no big deal yeah and ADUs have a very specific requirement that you either meet or don't meet you know you have to be between yeah. 300 and this you know, this percentage and it can be attached or detached so it's I think it's more of ADUs are permitted by right but what the board can do you're looking at the aesthetics so mm -hmm. you are signing off on the aesthetic and however they meet the you know, check yeah, the yeah. boxes for the ADU. That's up to them to figure it out. Could, could I'm just talking for mm -hmm. just to talk. It's most of what I say is useless. But um, that gable that you have on the right, what if you reverse the plan so that was on the left, so it kind of came out and then came back in? To, or is that you're trying to stay away from that? Uh, we were trying to stay away from that. Okay, that's why I'm asking. Yeah. Is, did you look at that from? We did look at that, and we kind of want the entry where it's at, the way it lays out on the site and everything yeah. because of the topography there. It would have been nice to see that. I mean, this is cool. It's pretty cool that you could do this, but to see it head on would have been kind of it's easy. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it is. I bet it's, and this house, this yellow house, it's tiny. So it's not like you're you're trying to make it some sort what, of... What is this right here? It's tiny, that's but this right across here. the street is also a very there. large apartment. Yeah. There. yeah. I looked at this property last summer or a year ago. Mm -hmm. June, um, but that's a that's an attachment to this guy. Okay, so it does have an attachment. That's an add-on or something. I didn't something. know if you had any comments regarding no. the rear, because you know it's pretty oh. tough to see. I think um, yeah. is that like a Todd? Is that like a patio in the back or something, or a deck or something? Actually, what he wants to do is he wants to actually grade that up a little bit, and I think we're going to have some issues with the geotech in yeah. doing that. Um, but is it like a patio off the he back? He wants a patio off the back. 
Not a deck, but a patio. Not a deck, but a patio. So it'd be like a retaining wall and all right. that stuff. I think we should assume it's a deck that's screened on the bottom. Maybe. Maybe. Would that be a good assumption? I, I think that's what we're going to have to do. Okay. Yeah, I think the concrete. That looks there. expensive. Yeah. <laughs> so I, yeah. He, he thinks the whole site's level, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> no, it drops pretty dramatically. Yeah, it's outside our purview, but I would like to apologize. I think it's really unfortunate, the 35% rule. Yeah, is working you guys out a duplex here because I think it's a great location for one. It's bureaucracy at its finest. Yeah, um, I apologize to the owner. <laughs> well, he's he's going to build it as a spec house with an ADU, yeah. and he thinks there is a market for that. So, there, I bet there is. Yeah, it, you know, it's just basic looking vernacular, no frills. Uh, you know. Kind of what we're after. Yeah. Um, setting the garage back eight feet like we are, I think, will help, too. And so uh, in the back, is the middle window set up higher than the adjacent door and adjacent window? Mm, it should not be. It looks like it. But it well, is. That looks okay. like a slider, a sliding door. No, yeah, it's, it's, it should be a pair that. of double hungs, but I think, yeah, it's. you're right. Okay. I think it if you get those elements on there that you know what goes on there to make it how it should be it should be fine i would think yeah this house looks like 100 different houses in oregon city so or 100 other houses in oregon city it, it fits in really well in my opinion yeah now the, like, the double gable or single gable um i'd do the double if it was i would me. too mm -hmm. <laughs> no, it's, it's so a recommendation from Denise. Everything's too. so plain Jane yeah. on the front. If you do something there to mix it up, it's well, going to help. Even though you're bringing in a bungalow element, can I, I don't think that is a bungalow no, element. No, not really. I it's, would disagree with that. Not with that pitch, I don't think okay. we would. We would have to present findings because of the other house in Kanima that's proposing. Something yeah, I was just going to say something about that. Um, the rest of this house is a rectangle, and there's one deviation from that on the front. Which is, I think, the finding that we would find for justifying this. But we'd have to have a very specific reason why we're allowing it here. Not well, I case. think it's for the massing. It's to, to, to reduce the massing. And I think the pitch is such that on a bungalow, you'd be at four, maybe five, pushing at six. This is, what is this, eight or ten or something? Eight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that's where... I'm just saying, saying it's an approach. That's <coughs> whereas bungalow... Uh, hear me out, sorry. That that vernacular, you know, we, we in Oregon City we generally didn't see that second gable because we True. had a very proportional uh, front front facade, and so this I just we just don't have an example of a vernacular utilizing this design solution. So that that's and I know how much in past the board has been pretty adamant about the front elevation of the vernacular is kind of staying true. So that that was my recommendation, but. Can I um, ask if that is true for all architectural styles? Because we talk a lot about vernacular, mm -hmm. and we talk a lot about bungalow, and that seems to be where most people go because mm -hmm. it's less ornate than others. Right. But don't we see double gables in? I know? haven't seen any, so I'd love well, if you can think. But I've of never one seen a situation like this where you've got a, an ADU. No, no, no. no I'm just talking right about the, just the the second She's gable for a vernacular so, in Oregon. City. So the term vernacular to me though means the style kind of True. general yeah, but in style. Oregon City, we have vernacular with a capital V, which is, if you look at our design guidelines, is specifically spelled out. So we've capitalized our vernacular as a specific style. And most everybody else will look at vernacular as a very general. mundane, general, mm -hmm. very uh, blue-collar mm -hmm. style. Now, Denise, in her letter that she just dropped off when she walked in the door, references the Healy house, which I'm not familiar with which house that is and it's, i because this is the uh, maybe this it's not is, that house she's talking about another house in the neighborhood okay. that has the double gable okay it uh -huh. is a vernacular style house great so there well, is one no, I'm saying, I, it's not that there may not be what i just yeah. have not did she I, get the address by chance i can look up the healy house no she didn't okay if you would have said for a million dollars what style is this bungalow or vernacular with that, I would say there's there's no bungalow element on there no i wouldn't right. say there would be Sorry, ready for especially with that <laughs> uh, so that that's what I would say. I don't know if anybody else would look at it. I, I just see because there's so much stuff going on there. And well, if it was its own gig, it'd be a different story. Yeah. Well, and Denise is recommending also, and her recommendations from M and A, um, she is recommending that we detach the building. 
So already and have two separate buildings rather than having the connecting element. Connecting you mean element the stair of the roof. Staircase. Right. To detach the staircase. Right. So it's hooked to the other house. Well, it's actually in between. It's oh, in between I, so the, they both touch it. The thing Correct. is, the the downer with that is, you have no access on both sides of the the house. The house. Who who gets the garage? The house or the ADU? Right, and they want the flexibility of having that for either one, thinking that someone probably will live there and rent out the ADU. Because a lot of times, if there's a way you can integrate those stairs in the garage, but that sucks up garage space. And that makes the garage not available to the house. Right. Yeah, but at the same time, you've, you've killed off a breezeway between the two buildings. Yeah, and if you didn't have the breezeway and just made it all one structure, that... Be, I mean, that's the whole thing is if they could, yeah. they then would solve be too, a lot of, too much look, mass. Yeah, but you that. can make a cool historic duplex and yeah. problem solved. But yeah, I, yeah. So this is the Healy house, but I don't, I'm seeing it's like like a Gambrel roof. Uh, yeah, I'm seeing yeah. a Gambrel roof. So I'm that's a, confused. Um, it's a James stuff. Healy house. Is there oh, a, oh, this is Catherine. <laughs> Healy's. <laughs> His what, mistress on the side. Which? Oh, uh, this, yeah, it's very normal to have, like, James, uh, what, Healy, down there. James Healy. There it is. There's a Catherine. Okay. It is spelled differently. Yeah, there's an E. Well, that just means we have a lots of different survey forms over many years. Yeah. Oh, so that's that house. Okay, well, next Okay, well, that's not the one. That's, that's the one right next door, door. right? Okay, yeah. I don't see, oh, well, hmm. that's the double... That doesn't help. That's a, that's a tiny right little gable. Yeah. No. But th that's a very narrow house. Mm -hmm. This one, how wide is the house you're thinking? Uh, I believe it's 24 feet. So four feet wider than the ADU. Huh. This is an well, 80 by 157 lot. Mm -hmm. I think it's only 60. Oh, it says 60. 60 right here on the oh. left side. Left. Why does it yeah. look like it says 80? No, it's 60. It's it kind of does, but it says 60. Okay. Huh. Well, it's not much wider than the garage. Maybe you do got to stick with the flat front. Boring. Both can be submitted. I, um, the, the larger question is, is the massing. I mean, is this some, this is the time to say, you know, I, I really have trouble with the proposed massing and, and I really would think you need to look at further ways to reduce the massing or I think what you've your approach here has adequately mitigated because I think that's the kind of things um, the applicant probably wants to hear it, Pro programmatically you can't really reduce the, ma the massing I mean could, could that garage go any further back or are you right at the edge we're right at the edge yeah we'd end up joisting it mm. yeah this is a we're looking at two very thin and not terribly deep buildings right next to an exceptionally small house. Very small house. Very small house. So um, I think it's hard to look at the house next door and say these look big. Um, Have you measured the height of the house oh, next right. door versus it's the height of the tiny, ADU? It's a house. very tiny house. No, I don't think not. it's 20 feet wide. I no, this is, with the addition, we, we can is, do that and yeah. draw a straight but, on yeah, elevation when we come back next time. Yeah, 12 to 16. So I guess you could say, oh, small, medium, big. <laughs> <laughs> right? There we go. That's and what we're trying so to do. So you're kind of just building up, you know, from yeah. baby bear to mama bear to papa bear. Well, and if you look at the overall context, not just the house next door, but the apartment. The apartments the just is, kill everything. Yeah. yeah. It's the pink one, right? Pink yeah. Ones. Yeah. I mean, they're just so. 60s, 70s. Ugh. Well, that's not actually not. That's an older building. Yeah, this is the mm -hmm. probably 50s. It's an old <laughs> house that was torn, uh, converted into. Yeah. Converted. Yeah. It just but it doesn't it's look the good. The recently painted yeah. blue, correct? Have um, I painted purple or paint. It's or some funky color. Yeah. So. I, I don't mind. My opinion is that I could probably go either way on it, but mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't. I certainly wouldn't want to rock the boat or try and. Have the MNA just so? <laughs> Do you guys have any opinion on that? That gable coming out in the front? No, I think that it helps reduce the massing. You know, aesthetically, I think it.
draws the eye down, so you're not looking way yeah, up. I do like Derek's idea of raising the the porch over the garage you up gotta, a little bit too, and I think that really would help too. Well, I think the other thing is if you have a seven or eight foot garage door, you got this low thing, it's going to get destroyed if it can come up a little bit to soften the front of that because it looks so tall. Right. right now, see where the 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 cover of the porch. <laughs> is under the two windows of the second gable it's kind of right there mm -hmm. so if you did the same thing to those windows C could you make a hip a hip on the corner well, there taught yeah. of the kind of like the same instead of a shed just bring it so like there's so take help. it all the at that level wrap it around and then bring the hip around return mm -hmm. that might make it not look so choppy I think that would. I think that would help a lot. But isn't the intent for these to to read like two separate buildings? Yeah. Well, yes, because he can't do a duplex. He's he can't do really. This. I mean, I also look at it as if I'm going to go in there, I'd want that roof a little higher so that if I'm backing in, I'm not going to destroy. Oh no, no, no! It. I'm not. I'm not speaking with respect to the height of it, but the the, the way that they're connected. Um, Actually, as an ADU, we'd like it to read as one, one building, one house. I know in, in McLaughlin the board did, you know, when we, when there was a return on a vernacular porch, I know with uh, Mr. Heinz on 4th, there's a request not to return and continue. So, you know, the, the question of how do you take a traditional hipped front porch for the vernacular and then... The but I think that was a separate situation. I don't think you can blanket how that that building with that when we talked about the roof would relate to this I some of this seems very similar to the discussion we're having with the kinema yeah that's house. what he's talking about she's talking about yeah oh, okay because i mean like we have wraparound and we have multiple mm -hmm. gables i'm you know like it just it could it could probably have two options there to look at it but i think definitely bringing those roofs together would help mm -hmm. john let me ask you do you view this uh, Which one, Jonathan? Okay. Uh, do you view this as a wraparound or um, an extended porch? I think both the porch overhang and the garage overhang should match. Uh, Jonathan. Uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean, I should should they align? Sure, um, but I'm I'm just wondering if because of the the the, the turn from. So you're saying that we want should be read as one, one building. Right, to read as one, one house, basically. Yeah, the recessed part is supposed to make. So that the porch is becoming this, this, the stitch that's holding it together. I don't know. It just seems so. It seems very similar to uh, some of the issues that we had with mm -hmm. the Kanima house. Um, can I clarify something? You want it to read as one house or function as one house? Actually, both. Both. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I definitely see what you're saying. Um, if it, if this porch wrapped from the primary facade onto either of the sides, I would agree with you. I think the four foot return that we're seeing on the side. Uh, is not significant to call, to call it a wraparound porch. Because as we're looking at this, we're seeing more of that primary residence, the side, because it's stepped back four feet or so, and then we're seeing the, the wall in between the two that extends back. Um, we really don't want it to read as a wraparound porch. We, no. We're using that porch over the garage more to break up that mass. And, and you're covering the walkway back, so there's roughly a four feet gap in between the house and the garage. The six feet, actually. Six feet, okay. Um, so that would imply a six foot porch is there, like is, thing. Is there an entrance on the, the larger house? Is there an entrance that you can get to when you climb the stairs? You can you get to that off. house if you climb the stairs? No. That's the, the only reason for the stairs is to get to the ADU. Then why does the, why do the stairs need to touch the other so house? Like well, okay. um, I guess they really don't. 
that we didn't want to make would the that, garage. Would yes. that alleviate? Yeah, the, you know, with. Could, could you eliminate the roof over the garage? You, you could, entirely? but then you do. The, the one problem is that then you have these large exposed wooden stairs. Yeah, which we well, do. what would keep them unexposed? Well, if we incorporated them into the garage, then. It's oh, they're make inside everything. the garage? No, no we don't want them the inside buildings. the garage. Yeah. There, it's outside. The yeah. Stairs are outside. So you're yeah. talking about the roof in between the two primary gable roofs. I think John's talking about the roof over the uh, garage door entry. Yeah, just as a thought, would you, if you got rid of that roof, would it make it not so busy? I don't know. Make it look a lot taller, though. Yeah, but it's. Would it be wrong to mix styles there if you're trying to have two separate buildings? Are you trying to make it one gig? In other words, it, and I don't want to waste any more time, but but could this ADU be a story and a half with a couple of sheds on either side kind of a thing? Or would that just screw everything up? I don't think the sheds would work. Would. I'm only saying because you've got one style in a row. This is a row house situation. <coughs> um, I don't know. I don't. I don't mind the roof but, on the front. I always but, think, for me, I'd back up and destroy one of those posts or something. The tiny house is is, is very vertical. You know, you know, it's very vertically oriented. Yeah. So why Narrow. couldn't it? Why can't it have the same overhang as the big house? The same style overhang as the big house. What do you mean overhang? Well, you you know that covers the porch on the big house. Why can't you have that same? That, that's yeah. what I was saying. And that's what we're saying. We, yeah. we think we should do that. And, and, wrap and make it underneath the windows more. Yes, okay. exactly. It would come up and there would be a return hip, just like you see on that mm -hmm. one corner of the yard. And then there. that would take away the, the need to have the other one touch the top of the roof or the top of the existing thing? You have a valley up there. You have a valley that comes tied around. Together. Okay. And then the roof goes up. So on the second floor between the two buildings, is that open or wall? It's stairs. There's a wall either side with the stair going up. Mm -hmm. But as I'm looking at the front elevation, I look at the second floor between the ADU and the house. It's open. It's open. Okay. Oh, there's no covered. There's no roof. There's covered. There's roof, but, but there's no wall. In front. There's no wall. Yeah, yeah. Would you like to enclose that? Stair? You can't. I don't think. But it's just fire. They can enclose the stair. It's just a firewall question. Right. Oh, I thought yeah. it was. A, I thought he was not able to do that. No, I mean, so take the historic. This just building code. Accessory I mean, historically. dwelling. Historically, yes. There's accessory dwelling units must have their own entrance. entrance. That's not going through a garage. So okay. even if you're in the garage, which this is such a smaller garage. You'd have to dedicate a whole vestibule and stairs that go in. So if you have to go on the outside, you either or um, you know expose stairs, and what they try to do is kind of a hybrid, or it's a fire once again a firewall mm -hmm. stairs that go up that connect the two. And that's a design solution that would meet code. But the question is, is that I mean the thought was keeping it exposed continue to break that massing. And, or to the point where we have a building where enclosing it or keeping it open, is there no is there that much effect between option A and option B, or do you still really have the same mass, depending on if you enclose it or not? And what was the comment from the MNA about the stairs? I can read it. Thank you. Do you want me to? Yeah, just just the whole, not the whole thing, just the part about the stairs. Um, this is an email from Denise. Um, the design you propose is an email to Todd. The design you propose better meets the design guidelines from the Golf and Conservation District. The design which the, the double gable complements the simplicity of the James Healy House. The Healy House, even with its non-compliant vinyl windows and rake siding, does not get lost as an individually designated structure. The previous application dominated the site and the Healy House appeared to be an afterthought. Double gable provides a better visual scale in proportion to the front of the house. However, I might note that the proposed attach attachment of the garage to the house does not meet the design guidelines for a detached garage, so the board will have to make findings on that. We have had the same issue with new construction that was being proposed for the three houses on 9th and Jackson Street. 
We strongly recommend a preservation incentive be sought for any underlying zoning issues. Historic design guidelines should be trump the underlying zoning requirement. So they recommend to uh, the board if any setbacks need to be approved to allow further flexibility on where to put the house. It's kind of what they're saying. I don't know if that means flexibility is of the side yard setback to allow a further Actually, separation. Actually, Denise was, I think, implying was maybe the front yard setback be reduced. To, oh. to bring the house forward? Move the house forward mm -hmm. so we're not over the edge of the cliff. Right, yeah. Absolutely, I, I think that that's a very, that's exact, yeah. this situation is exactly why the preservation incentives were created, which if is you brought put the, the house, house in the best location for the site. If you brought the house forward, could you keep the, the garage where it's at so that, you know, bringing it forward with that? Good. Would that. So you'd be, it would be over the garage wouldn't be like it wouldn't no, no this this front. this yes. house here would come forward this would stay where oh, it's I at. See, I see. maybe come forward x amount of feet okay, okay so that this becomes a little bit more prominent I see. and this stay, stays back okay would that lessen or intensify the mass if you did that because uh, <laughs> it's definitely a bigger house is so d do you want to be able to enclose the stair no okay we'd prefer not to but just have that wrap around so maybe if it could come forward and then have the wrap around that ties in at the same height like you're saying yeah with a hip on the side sure yeah I'm personally not a fan of the wraparound, but keep them. Would you keep them entirely separate? Mm -hmm. So go back to that. Could, could we? Uh, what if yeah, you? Too. What if you? The what if the house had its own where that hip is is where it ends. Stops right there. Stops mm -hmm. right there. Mm -hmm. Then the the ADU either keeps the shed or does another smaller hip, hip vernacular roof. Would that mess things up? No, no. I, I think, think I like the second. I keeping like the shed on the eight, on the EDU would be fine. So you keep the shed and maybe keep it at the height, but raise it up. Raise it up. Maybe raise it up, but keep them with its, you know, yeah, hip hip return and cover the entrance. Mm -hmm. uh, no, we wouldn't have no, to cover that entry. You, you wouldn't cover it at all. You just keep that roof as its own thing, mm -hmm. and the house has its own thing, and. Mm -hmm. You like either you either have it as a, a hip return mm -hmm. like the house, or you keep it as a shed to maybe delineate. Would that help? Well, I think it, it would help avoid some of the questions that we were having with the Kanima house. And you will have in probably December when they come back. Mm -hmm. They're coming That's in right. December. Have Christmas. Oh, <laughs> Merry Christmas! <laughs> <laughs> and you're hoping to bring this next month? I don't think you'll you won't be the January meeting. Yeah, I think we'll be in January. Oh, okay. I don't know. Do you guys think that might? Help? I do, and I, but I I for making the hip on both houses so that they kind of belong to each other. I, I don't know that I'd be locked into that. Maybe keep them different just so they look a little different. Yeah, Cindy, I, I have to disagree with you there. I would keep the ship. I think the hip will get too large by the time you go across those. Oh, not to connect them. No. Yep. No, I understand what you're saying. No. By the time you go across the 20 foot width, and mm -hmm. then that the extra six feet mm -hmm. to get to the the house, um, the top of that uh, hip is going to be competing with those windows. The only thing that keeps me from not wanting. Oh no! No no the, no! It would be the same pitch. You would just return it on either the left and yeah. right. Yeah, and the only reason that I that I say that just I like think this. the hip would be better is because I return think it would right go thing. under those two windows better than it ha to raise the shed and, and have the shed under the those shed. two windows. Yeah, I think side. bringing the shed up higher well, you're still would make the same it look. Pitch. Huh? You're still going to the same pitch. The shed versus the hip right. is going to be the same. Yeah, but I think just the fact that it's a shed and it's overhanging and it's higher, it's going to make it look. No no no. No, no. Don't we can look at it both ways and see. Yeah. Yeah. Once again, you always have the ability to look at option yeah. A and option B and approve and both or just rate. approve one. Okay. And then this has its own <laughs> roof thing too, just like this. I think we will have two no. options for that. For the, the, it's so it's that you can just the, see what it looks the, like. Over the, so over this height here? Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. yeah, it just comes like this. So you could have, I think, either two hip 
mm-hmm. roofs or a hip and a shed. Right. Toss a coin and then come back with one of them. Or both. <laughs> or both. <laughs> yeah, yeah. both options to yeah. say, hey, here's another option. Which one do you like? Because yeah. it'd be nice to see them both mm-hmm. yeah. and see how they look, you know, head compare on. Them. Compare them. Yep. Yeah. That would help, I think. And then going back to what we were talking about, the double gable, if you can um, perhaps show us a house or two in the Oregon City area that has something like this, everything else can be very, very plain, but... Uh, At least we'd have something to go off of. Yeah. yeah. And it doesn't have to be a historic house. It can be a new construction. Uh, it would be better to have it historic so we could say, <laughs> no, here's saying, some ammo. <laughs> no, but I'm saying it, would be, it could be something that was approved a long time ago. It was working in the neighborhood. If it's working in the neighborhood, something. I think I can find something. You can probably find something out of town that you could like interject and say, "Well, it's on this one street. Nobody goes down." <laughs> you know? So I think we're good there. Yeah. Does everybody yeah. agree with that? Yeah. Separate roofs. Yeah. Try and potentially bring the house forward. I don't know. So, okay. I, do, I would like to know how tall this little house is, though, and how tall that AD. We'll, we'll show a straight on elevation. Yeah. Show that. Just just so we can see. You know how much bigger it's going to be okay all right we have so one last we're going to move on to um public hearing okay i got to read this Uh-oh. um we'll now commence the public hearing on agenda item uh pc 14-134 hr 1409 uh 512 7th Street modification to HR 1403 to reduce the proposed new construction from a two story to a one story building. The criteria for approval of a land use action are contained in Chapter 17 of the Oregon Municipal Code. The proposed development must comply with applicable provisions contained in the City of Oregon City Comprehensive Plan. Generally, unless otherwise noted, if a request is found to be consistent with the Municipal Code, it is considered consistent with the Comprehensive Plan. If you wish to participate in this hearing, including challenges for bias or conflict of interest, you must complete the sign-in form located on the table at the front of the room and deliver it to staff. Please do so immediately. The chair will only recognize those who have submitted completed forms. Testimony will be taken in the following order. Applicant testimony in favor, testimony in opposition, rebuttal by applicant. When recognized by the chair, please come forward to the podium, give your name, address, and make your statement. All testimony, arguments, and evidence presented regarding this Requests must be directed toward the applicable criteria or other criteria in the plan or land use regulation which the person believes to apply to the decision. Please address only the applicable criteria for the decision. Please do not repeat testimony. If you wish, you may choose merely to agree with the previous speaker's statements. An issue which may be the basis for an appeal to the Land Use Board of Appeals shall be raised not later than the close of record at or the final evidentiary hearing. Such issues shall be raised and accompanied by statements or evidence sufficient to afford the Commission and the parties an adequate opportunity to respond to each issue. Failure to raise an issue accompanied by statements or evidence sufficient to afford the decision makers and the parties an opportunity to respond to the issue precludes appeal to the Land Use Board of Appeals based on that issue. Failure of persons to participate in the public hearing either orally or in writing precludes that person's right to appeal to the City Council or LUBA. Written testimony submitted prior to the hearing constitutes participation in the hearing. Failure of the applicant to raise constitutional or other issues related to the proposed conditions of approval with sufficient specificity to allow the decision maker to respond to the issue precludes an action for damages in the circuit court. Prior to conclusion of the initial evidentiary hearing, any participant may request an opportunity to present additional evidence, arguments, or testimony regarding the application. The Commission <coughs> shall grant such requests by continuing the public hearing pursuant to the standards contained in ORS 197.763. Do any of the board members have a conflict of interest or ex parte contact regarding this application? No. No. Who has visited this site? Yeah, all of us drive by it. Okay. I did have to read that, Derek. Yeah. They should have it on a recording. <laughs> so like, I know, I yeah, that. John's voice. <laughs> she uh, really thank you, Chair. We'll go move through this pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, as you recall, um, the applicant was here last spring for a two-story uh, new infill project, um, beautifully designed. Uh, they've come back with a reduced one story and a slightly different design for a one story. Uh, looking at uh, a brick facade with um, kind of a stone um, a cast stone to resemble um, kind of a salt, from what I understand, um, and aluminum clad um, storefront system. And I'll go through quickly the front elevation. Uh, once sure. again, you remember in March we had um, a finding to support the um, kind of a party wall to have no um, 
uh, windows on the side elevation here because it was at the property line with going to one story that situation still exists so I recommend that the board continue that support for the side elevation um, at the property line not having the windows so it shows the rear elevation and then this is the elevation um, next to the existing building so that's the party wall you do not see this shows the uh, layout it has the new one-story building and the uh, gar uh, garage that can be accessed through the alley and a parking spot this the applicant has um, purchased the property next door which is the parking lot and they'll be utilizing a lot of that parking for their parking this shows the sketch up of it so at this time I don't have any specific Oh, go ahead. I was going to ask, was the garage on the last one? No, it was not. Oh. I didn't think so. Yeah. Who gets to park in there? The doctor. <laughs> I was going to say. In the previous application, there was a ground floor kind of spec retailer office. Yeah. Um, with the, um, the medical office on the second floor, this is just the medical office. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so on my end, I do not have any additional conditions, and I rec still support the request um, to not meet the planning division's requirement for 30% transparency on the side elevation as a way to ensure that at such time that parking lot next door redevelops, um, it, it has full opportunity to um, just have an infill building. And this could be the central infill building for the right. block. So I will go back to the Front elevation, I will hand it off to the applicant unless the board has any specific questions for me. For you mm -hmm. or for him? Just for me before I hand it off. Uh, did the planning commission require him to go to brick on the side rather than planning. CMU? Or uh, the no. previous application had CMU on the side? The owner it? actually had a desire to do brick on this side, on okay. the entire side. I, there was something in staff report, I think, that I don't know if it got left or not yeah, about the vertical sorry. gardens, and those are not long. I remember proposed. that. It's probably a brick veneer. It is a brick veneer. Yeah. It's, I mean, we, it was unfortunate because of the SDCs primarily that were going to be assessed. Um, the building got cut in half, basically, as far as the budget. And so it is now going to be a wood frame building with a brick veneer on three sides. Well, I think uh, if they decide to go with no stories, you won't have to come before us. Yeah, well, we've already got that. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've, this is like the second building in as many months where we've gone from three stories to two, and now we're going two stories to one on another building. So, When do they want to start construction on this? January 1. <laughs> they are concurrently going through... Um, the revision to the site plan design review. So there's a move to try to... And actually, after this hearing, happen. if... You guys are benevolent and grant us approval. We will submit for building permits later this week. So. Did they um, consider housing? They did, and the doctor does not want to be a landlord. He wants this strictly for his business. And so did that play into it coming down a floor at all, or was it strictly because of the SDC fees? It was because of the SDCs and the desire to reduce the budget and his not wanting to be a landlord. Got rid of all the spec space in the building and um, got rid of the elevator requirement for a medical provider on the second floor. Mm -hmm. and it was a big savings, also. Yeah, nice. And then the garage came in too because he wants some place to park his car and his motorcycles when he comes to work. Got it. Um, does anybody have any questions for staff or applicant? Uh -uh. Well, I don't need to ask about anybody else. Um, we can close this public hearing unless somebody wants to say anything else but I would be happy to close it and the McLaughlin Neighbor Association comments are in the packet read it mm -hmm. so I, did you guys read that mm -hmm. yeah all right I'm gonna close the public hearing so we can talk about it amongst ourselves does anybody have any issues with this or any stuff or does anybody want to make a motion or any of that stuff uh, I would. Oh, you gotta find it. I've gotta find it. Yeah, unless anyone wants to discuss this uh, any further, I would move to just uh, to approve 
uh, PC 14-134, 134, uh, HR 1409. Somebody want to second that? I second. Can we call for a vote? Jonathan Stone. Aye. Cindy Toll. Aye. Derek Metzen. Aye. Chair McLaughlin. Aye. Motion pairs. Thanks, Todd. See you in January. It's not the building anyone wanted here. That's for sure. No. <laughs> it's all about money. Yeah, unfortunately. All right. Thank you. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. As See you in a couple it's, months. As long as it's the building the owner wants. I, I know. And it is. They're going to be happy with it, I think. So. At least be happy to see something there other than a fence. Better than the hole in the ground with a fence around it. Yeah. So. Okay. I think we're done. We yeah. can adjourn. Thank you. All righty. So